Good evening and welcome to this another presentation of the Agency for Public Information, where we bring you the latest on government's plans, programs and policies. I am Nadia Slater. Coming up this evening, improving telecommunications across the sub-region, CASIP holds a public consultation. Farmers are being encouraged to go fully organic with the opening of a compost facility. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank is moving towards EC polymer notes. And the Ministry of Health receives a donation from the Republic of China on Taiwan. Those stories and more. But first, let's join Kesha Woodley for Newswatch. Good evening and welcome to this edition of News Watch for Tuesday, January 15, 2019. I am Keisha Woodley. A joint statement from the Commercial, Technical and Allied Workers Union, the National Workers Movement and the Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines stated that on Friday afternoon of January 11, 2019, these entities formally met to discuss several important matters affecting the workers employed by the central government. These matters included wage salary enhancements for central government's employees, pensions, allowances, and working conditions, and an overview of the economy and the fiscal condition of central government and the upcoming 2019 budget. Two other trade unions were also invited to this meeting, namely the Public Service Union and the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Teachers Union. Also invited was the Police Welfare Association. The representatives of the PSU, SVGTU and the Police Welfare Association failed and or refused to comply with the usual long-standing security requisites at the office of the Prime Minister to surrender their cell phones for safekeeping at the security checkpoint at the office of the Prime Minister. So the meeting proceeded with Without the representatives of the PSU, SVGTU, and the Police Welfare Association. The eight representatives of the CTAWU and the NWM for each willingly complied with the normal security requisites, including the deposit of their cell phones with the relevant security officer at the office of the Prime Minister. In a meeting lasting for some three hours, the representatives of the CTAWU, NWM, and the Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines exchanged views frankly and respectfully on all the items on the agenda. On the vital matter of wage salary increases, the representatives of the CTAWU, NWM, and the Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines agreed as follows. One, a 1% retroactive increase from July 1st, 2018 to December 31st, 2018. Two, a further increase of the 1.5% increase for 2019. And three, a further increase of 2% for 2020. The CTAWU, the NWM, and the Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines consider these increases to be fair and reasonable in all the prevailing circumstances. It is estimated that each percentage point increase amounts to $3 million annually. The CTAWU, NWM, and the government further agreed to a detailed discussion on allowances, other workers' benefits, and allowances. The two unions will submit shortly memoranda in these respects. The union's representatives will meet on these matters with a government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines Committee headed by the Director General of Finance and Planning. The CTAWU and WN and the government expressed satisfaction at the improvement in the economy as attested to late last year by the staff report of the International Monetary Fund on the occasion of the usual Article 4 consultation. The CTAWU and WM 
and the government while being upbeat of the economic prospects in the medium term are very mindful of the challenges and natural disasters the CTAWU and WM and the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines agreed to keep their lines of communication and consultation open in accord with best international practices. The Commercial, Technical and Allied Workers Unions delegation was led by Mr. Burns Bonnady and that of the National Workers Movement was led by Mr. Noel Jackson. The government of St. Vincent and the Grandin's delegation was led by Prime Minister Dr. Ralph E. Gonsalves and included the Minister of Finance Camilo Gonsalves, Minister of Labor Saboto Caesar, and four senior public officials, Directors General of Finance and Planning, Budget Director, Cabinet Secretary and Fiscal Advisor. Meantime, the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force on Sunday held a service of thanksgiving under the theme, Giving Thanks, Lord, You Have Been Good to Us. The service was held at the Old Montrose Police Station and saw officers coming out in their numbers to give thanks. We need the presence, we need the guidance, and we need the protection of Jesus Christ. So I really want to see the time when we would send out information and see that we are going to have a church service well, at Old Montrose. We are going to have an appreciation service at, at Lomans by Pastor Cupid. All available members must attend. And we do not have to detail persons to attend those because we need it. We need it. We need the spiritual guidance. With his sermon entitled, Waymaker and Theme, With God All Things Are Possible, leading seaman of the SVG Coast Guard, Pastor Nolan James, in delivering the sermon, urge all officers to trust God at all times. We are living in a blessed nation and we will be blessed. Yes. Amen. Yes. Oh God, you, you got to catch it. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. You fix your car, and there's another problem waiting to be solved on the money just in there. So as a matter of fact, if you bring your car to church, it's the greatest tambourine, kalang, kalang, kalang. <laughs> you have an issue with your child, and when you fix that issue, there's another one waiting. Whatever your challenges are, learn to thank God that you are still here. Yes, Lord. Those in attendance were moved into an atmosphere of praise and heard uplifting testimonies of thanksgiving. Finally, on Newswatch, Vincentian Diaspora in Toronto donates medical supplies. This is according to a news release from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The members of the SVG Toronto Support Group and the SVG Toronto Association continue to spearhead charitable contributions in the diaspora. Several medical items included mattresses, blood pressure monitors, pampers, and other medical supplies were delivered to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital at a ceremony held on Friday, December 21st, 2018 at the atrium of the hospital. Sister Grace Walters, the hospital administrator, on behalf of the Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment and the government, ended the ceremony with a heartfelt vote of thanks to the donors for their generous contributions. Representatives of the SVG Toronto Support Group and SVG Toronto Association and Mr. Fitzgerald Huggins, Consul General in the Consulate of St. Vincent and the Grandies in Toronto, were also present at the handover. These are all the stories making this edition of Newswatch. Thank you for viewing. Do have a wonderful evening. I am Keisha Woodley. With just one click, the internet connects people, businesses, and nations.
Being connected can open a world of information and opportunities. You can get services and products of your choice much faster. From electronic financial transactions to connecting with family and friends. From being up to date with the latest news and information to learning new skills and acquiring academic qualifications. All from the convenience of your home or wherever you roam. Get connected today. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC, and this station. Welcome back. The Caribbean Regional Communication Infrastructure Program, CARSIP, is a regional initiative aimed at improving the access to and quality of telecommunications in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia, and Grenada. It has been funded by the World Bank in partnership with Digicel. Having completed two components of the project, there was a public consultation held on Monday, January 14, 2019 at the Methodist Church Hall. This public consultation was aimed at getting feedback on Lot 3 of the project, which entails the deployment of submarine cables, which would connect St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Grenada. Submarine cables have been the backbone communication for many hundreds of years, going back 150 years to Isambarking and Brunel, telegraph cables to the, today, submarine fiber optic cables. And as has been explained, this project is to um, deploy a submarine cable uh, in no other different way than we do all around the world currently. And this cable, the CARSIP cable, will connect uh, the islands of St. Vincent and Grenada uh, and the intervening main five Grenadine islands of Bekwe, Mustique, Kanawan, Union, and Karaka, with, uh, as has been explained, microwave links to the smaller islands as listed on the screen. Um, with this cable, uh, it's a 12 fibre pair cable, we'll be able to provide uh, cable, fibre cable fiber connectivity direct between the islands and the main islands of St Vincent and Grenada, uh, and fibre connectivity between the two islands of St Vincent and Grenada. Uh, initial deployment of um, uh, 40 gigs circuit to the government is a fraction of what this cable will ultimately deliver. Um, currently, and I'll explain a little more in the following slide, Digicel already uh, owns a submarine fiber optic cable between the two main islands, but as has been explained, this cable will supplement uh, the uh, and improve greatly upon the existing microwave links to the Grenadine Islands, which are by definition subject to atmospheric conditions and with a fibre optic cable the capacity is travelling by the speed of light, bandwidth is uh, certainly a great deal uh, more improved from your microwave links, more resiliency, redundancy uh, and bandwidth to the islands. Uh, not shown on this map but I'll show a later one is an existing, uh, sorry, additional submarine cable that will link the top of uh, the main island St Vincent uh, where the Soufair volcano prevents terrestrial round island connectivity. So we'll be installing a separate festoon between the villages of Chateau Belair and Ovia. Addressing the audience was Marcel Edwards John of the Ministry of Economic Planning and Sustainable Development, who outlined the importance of the project and its implication for the development of ICT in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. As we are aware, I, the ICT sector plays a very important role in development. And the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines recognizing the, recognizes the importance of creating a modern, vibrant information and technology sector as a catalyst for growth, bringing opportunities for employment, more efficient and transparent government, and for innovation and entrepreneurship. But to a large extent, I'm sure we all realize that these gains depend on how well we can integrate into the global economy. But meaningful re integration requires, among other things, significant investments in ICT, specifically in building a robust telecommunication infrastructure. Over the last two decades or so, St. Vincent and the Grenadines has made significant strides in ICT, and I'm sure we can all attest to that. In particular, we note the positive trends in internet and broadband connectivity, which have translated into greater access for businesses as well as governments, households, and individuals. More and more, 
we see businesses leveraging improved connectivity to promote their products and their services as they continue to find it increasingly easier to connect with regional and international markets. But there are still gaps. So as we move to narrow or move closer to narrowing the digital divide, the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, along with Grenada and St. Lucia, as mentioned by Christian earlier, as being the other partners or the other countries participating in the CASIP, the government's requested um, assistance from the World Bank to implement the Caribbean Regional Communication Infrastructure Project, which is now known as the CASIP. Now, in 2012, under the leadership of um, Dr. Gerald Thompson, he was very inspirational at that point, the government secured financing from the World Bank and embarked on what we now consider to be the largest ICT investment projects with the commencement of the CASIP. Now, the CASIP is fully aligned to the National Development Strategy as it supports the government's objective of leveraging, leveraging ICT to transform the economy. Um, I'm sure um, a few years ago in this very same hall, we launched the National and Economic Social Development Plan for the period 2013 to 2025. That is the development blueprint for St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the CASIP is well located or well sited within that particular, within the, within the plan. Now the CASIP on completion will contribute to extending the government's communication infrastructure in order to improve internal business processes extend services, and this is important, to underserved communities, as well as facilitating greater access to information. Now, as we know, information has become global, and faster access to information is, in many ways, a competitive advantage for any country. Now, the CASIP, under the esteemed leadership of our project coordinator, Roxanne John, is being implemented by the Ministry of Finance, Economic Planning, Sustainable Development, and Information Technology. The CASIP has two main components. Component one is the regional connectivity infrastructure. And this component is geared towards the development of high-speed broadband backbone network and to the enhancement of government's wide area network through a public-private partnership, hence our engagement with Digicel. And this is the component that is the focus of today's consultation. The other component, component two, which is ICT-led innovation, supports incubation of businesses in ICT and ICT-enabled service industries, and it provides training in a range of ICT areas. Digicel's CARSIP manager, Crystal Francis, gave an overview of Digicel's role in the project and what has been achieved thus far is a World Bank funded initiative across the three islands of St. Lucia, St. Vincent and Grenada. There are three lots within this project. Lot one, which is a G1 set up for the customer network, being the governments of those islands. Lot two, which is the schools network, which St. Vincent does not partake in. And lot three, which we'll get into further detail later on, which is the subsea component. Under Lot 1 and 2 of the CARSIP project, Digicel will deploy about 1,000 kilometers of fiber to connect over 800 government buildings and provide fully managed services for 16.5 years to the three governments. For St. Vincent and the Grenadines, this means that under Lot 1, we will connect 176 government buildings. In more detail, that entails an island-wide fiber backbone, which will, support the which will additionally support the delivery of an extended fiber to the business, fiber to the site, and LTE into the market. The fiber design has also been future-proofed with capacity to support fiber to the home services. This is great news for the general public, as we know we've been dominated by a monopoly throughout the years and it, this brings new products and services to the general public. Lot one of this CARSIP project for St. Vincent. Lot one 
delivers a full Cisco network with a primary and secondary core, centralized security, distribution of access networks, and a fiber ring protected with a backbone. 100% of this fiber to all sites in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and a full 10 gig and 1 gig line speed dedicated to the government. Under this G1, there will be 225 devices connected within these government buildings. Additionally, there will be the delivery of a government PBX service, which is fully redundant, and this centralized systems will provide IP PBX services to all government locations. This includes a SVG 911 PBX, which is fully redundant and will be located at the police headquarters. Within, <laughs> within the IPPBX system, there will be over 1,300 devices connected. As I would have mentioned earlier, this project is now fully on stream and is running on schedule. Based on the program milestones located on this slide deck in front of you, we can see for the G1 core lot one, we are now in the stage where we are rolling out to terrestrial fiber. This includes both underground and aerial fiber deployed throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This consultation focuses on lot three, the subsea component. We have reached three milestones. We have achieved three milestones within this project, within this component of the project and are now presently executing the final version of the ESIA, which is the Environmental, Environmental Social Impact Assessment, which is mandated by the World Bank. This public consultation forms one of the key components of this ESIA delivery, and it is absolutely necessary to engage the public and ensure that all concerns are taken into consideration before this project goes into full swing. The CASIP project was appraised in February of 2012 and this lot three forms the final component of the project. Welcome to Opportunity Calls where we inform you on vacancies within the government service, opportunities for training, scholarships and much more. Stay tuned as an opportunity might just be calling you. Applications are invited for suitably qualified persons for undergraduate and postgraduate scholarships offered by the Republic of Turkey. Eligibility Undergraduate programs Applicants must be under the age of 21, be a graduate or likely to graduate the community college in good academic standing, be in good health. Postgraduate program Applicants must be under the age of 30 for master's program and under the age of 35 for doctorate programs. Be a bachelor's or master's degree holder. Be in good health. Documents required. Certified copies of academic records and a copy of a valid ID card. For further information on how to apply, please visit our Facebook page at API SVG. Project. Located south of the island, extending to over five bays, White Sands, Kanash, Kaliakwa, Villa, and Indian Bay. Let's improve aquatic life. A message from the National Parks, Rivers, and Beaches Authority and partners. Thanks for staying with us. Farmers in St. Vincent and the Grenadines now have the alternative to grow fully organic crops with the opening of a compost facility at the Orange Hill Biotechnology Center. The ultimate goal is to not only ensure that Vincentians have a constant food supply, but that the foods consumed are safe. The compost facility is a joint collaboration between the governments of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the Republic of China on Taiwan. Kesha Woodley has more. More and more people across the world and right here at home are curious about the way crops they consume are grown. More and more, modern agriculture seems to be purely profit-driven rather than health-driven. 
Modern agriculture is characterized by high yields fueled by the indiscriminate use of fertilizers and pesticides. A lot of intentions are displaying a higher level of consciousness in terms of what they eat and are opting to grow what they eat and or choosing to purchase local produce instead. What is at stake? For one, our health and ultimately our lives. These are just some of the reasons behind the opening of a compost facility on site of the Orange Hill Biotechnology Center. According to Minister of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries, Rural Transformation, Industry and Labor, food safety should be at the heart of agriculture in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This he said whilst delivering the feature address at the opening of the aforementioned facility on Monday 14 January 2019. The compost facility was made possible through cooperation between the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan and the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and is part of a larger project entitled Strengthening Farmers' Organizations and Improving Fruit and Vegetable Production Technology in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. To this end, the Embassy of the Republic of China on Taiwan in St. Vincent and the Grenadines held a ceremony to officially hand over the compost facility to the Ministry of Agriculture. We have had excellent collaboration with the Taiwan mission here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And today is a fruit of one such um, collaboration. This facility is very important, especially given the heightened need and urge to have more naturally produced foods. So this is something that is welcome. Chief Agricultural Officer Ashley Kane re-echoed Richard's sentiments in that this country's agricultural sector has benefited greatly because of Taiwan's assistance. 400 years from now, somebody may read the, the records, Michael, and say on that particular day, hands were extended across from us, across to Taiwan, far place away. And out of that came a connection and a working together that helped to make St. Vincent and the Grandines one of the best agricultural places in the Caribbean. And for the children who may hear, that to me, Minister, is my foremost challenge. Let me work together. You know this, the folks, there's a folk song. Mama come le we labor. Remember know that? All together. Mama come le we labor. All together. We want me money for buy. What you want money for? Uh -huh. Want me money to buy. So it is my hope and expectation with our collaboration, 400 years from now, somebody will remember, you know they sang a song about come live with labor all together and we followed it and it became real. May God bless us and help us to make use 
of the support given to our friends and from Taiwan and other places to make us a better people and a stronger people in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Ambassador of the Republic of China on Taiwan, His Excellency Calvin Herr, is pleased that his government was able to collaborate with St. Vincent and the Grenadines on yet another project. Within this three-year time, we have 552 soil samples um, tests made. And also we have uh, 36 metric tons of biofertilizer produced. And we have 11 agricultural experts um, sent to visit St. Vincent in the Grenadines. We had 24 agriculture uh, machineries provided. We have 68 workshops in collaborate um, um, in uh, collect uh, uh, yeah collective uh, uh, technique marketing administration um, and, uh, and and when farmers cooperative hold. Minister of Agriculture Honorable Sabota Caesar express gratitude to the government and people of Taiwan for their contribution to the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I would like to begin first of all by thanking Almighty God for wisdom because wisdom is the principal thing. Some persons if you ask what gift do you wish to have, some persons may say, I wish to have money. But money without wisdom won't last you very long. It is in that vein I want to thank from the bottom of my heart on behalf of the ministry and the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the government and people of Taiwan, for your excellent partnership over the years. And we need to commend them for that. As I sat there as a student of history, when they agriculture history of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is written. The people of Taiwan will feature prominently in any writing of the agriculture history of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And that is something that we need to thank you. That we recognize that and we definitely appreciate that. The handover was witnessed by farmers, representatives from farmers' cooperatives, CADI, ICA, and staff of the Orange Hill Biotechnology Center. The center is supervised by Rohan McDonald. Reporting for the API, I am Keisha Woodley. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. If you are just joining us, you're viewing a presentation of the Agency for Public Information. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank will be putting EC Polymer Bank notes in circulation in June 2019, commencing with the new 50s. This will be followed by the new 100s, 20s and 10s in August and September, and the new 5s in 2020. As a result, representatives from the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank's head office in St. Kitts have been querying through the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union to raise awareness ahead of the move. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank's representatives, Sherman and Kirby and Rosbert Humphrey, met here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines with members of the media and the police on Friday, January 11th. Shanna Daniel has the details. <music> From cotton paper to polymer, the EC dollar will make this transition by June this year, beginning with the new 50s. According to Rosbert Humphrey, 
the deputy director at the currency management department at the eastern caribbean central bank this move has a range of benefits the top one it will be almost impossible to counterfeit the ec dollar so what is polymer this is a thin transparent and flexible plastic film made from polypropylene polypropylene is used interchangeably with polypropylene and what this is is just a versatile kind of plastic when we hear polymer we think plastic and you could be correct right but it is much more than com plastic it is very complex it's a hard plastic material okay quite like a lot of molecular parts put together to form that thin plastic film and by virtue of that it is very difficult to counterfeit okay where are you going to get the plastic from these are limited okay all the specialized companies okay internationally that makes them all right and even if you get say some hard plastic it will be very difficult for you to duplicate or replicate those features on that kind of plastic now most of our counterfeits are made through color copier or scanner using ordinary typing or photocopying paper and what counterfeiters do is just to pass them through the photocopier what i mean side by i mean well yes yeah, side by side okay now it will be difficult to do that with plastic you might need another photocopier okay <clears throat> um, it is resistant to water and other liquids and it is more resistant to dirt and dirt and moisture now with paper the moisture and the dirt they absorb in the paper make the note unfit for circulation with polymer you wipe and you go more hygienic last longer all right it is durable difficult to tear though because of the nature of the plastic material it doesn't matter how strong you be or which gym you go to you can't tear it okay now for you to tear that you have to have some malicious intent you know um, is that like you really set out to damage that banknote okay and by that it lasts longer it is eco-friendly the paper bank notes what we do when they become unfit is that we shred them and we send them to the landfill they have been burnt and they then decay you know with the naturally in the environment now with polymer we can't do that you can't burn plastic right plastic only melts eh? and you just get that big lump we don't want to create that kind of environmental hazard so what we will be doing is to export those materials to recyclable plants that are interested right that they can make whether they're plastic shares their vase or pencils or whatever okay i mean these can be recycled at the meeting with media and representatives from the police department mr humphrey explains the major changes that will take place to the ec polymer notes polymer would be slightly different slightly different the orientation would be different the current banknote made from paper are oriented, okay, landscape. This is how you are accustomed to view them, okay. With the polymer, they are oriented portrait from top to bottom, all right. And you see an image of it looking there, right. So this is how you, and it's easier too because even though the notes are oriented like this, this is how you count them. It's not because you, you count them, so it makes it even easier for you. The images and the landmarks on the banknotes remains the same it's just that we modernize the images they only have both like improved images on the back notes so the image of the of saint vincent and the Grenadines, because we have an image of each caribbean country each eastern caribbean country on the back notes so the image of saint vincent and the grenadines is the admiralty bay that's in beckley okay it's only ten dollar all right so please know your bank notes so those same images they are on the bank notes but what you see on the 10 the admiralty bay would be slightly different you will still recognize this admiralty bay but it will be slightly different okay than what we have on the polymer we have a unique tactile feature on each banknote and this is mainly for the blind and vis visually impaired um, persons now unique in the sense that we have a different shape on each denomination so for the fives we have the circle for the tens easy to remember the roman numeral for 10 we have an x for the 20s we have a rectangle for the 50s we have a triangle and for the hundreds we have a square it is located in this area the top left hand corner of the back end. okay so we have some raised bump that form the shape that the blind or visually impaired persons can feel and know what their bank notes are okay so no longer would they have to go to the bank and fold them on in a particular you know um 
shape or form, or put their money in different bags and different pockets to know which denomination they have where. And it can work for you too. Okay, I mean, you're in a dark area, whether on the bus going to Mespo, right? Yeah, Mespo. <laughs> Right? Or you are in the club, you know, with those dim lights and so on, and it's difficult for you to determine which banknote you have. You put in hand in your pocket or in your wallet, and you feel and you know, okay, yeah, this square, yeah, this is a hundred, you know, and that kind of thing. And then a partner asks you, partner, run a 20 now. But Lord, I didn't really want to give a 20, you know. You put your hand in your pocket and you feel this so basic, only for everything, you know. You know what I mean? So I'm teaching you some tricks. So it, 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 it would work for you too. So not just only for the blind, I could capitalize on this. All right? Now we have also a citrus window with pink flowers. And this is in, it is located in this area. So this area that looks great, it's actually transparent. All right? It's clear. All right? And part of the flower is on that note. Now the citrus feature on the paper banknote are the three fish here, which are perfectly aligned with the three fish here. All right. So what we did was just to replicate most, if not all, of the features on the paper bank note on the polymer bank note. So this is the situ feature. This time, okay. We have a holographic foil strip on the twenty, the fifty, and the hundred. All right. And this is the era I'm talking, I'm referring to the holographic foil strip. This is a silver metallic um, impression, right? That is on the bank note and it's glossy. When you look. I take it, tilt it, you see different images, all right, on the back notes, and it's kind of colorful. Now, anyone try to counterfeit that, it would come out gray or black. It would be very difficult to actually re replicate that. Okay, and we put it on the 50s, the 20s, and the 100s, because these are the notes that are most susceptible to counterfeiting. Possible to really counterfeit fives and tens, okay? It is, except if, you know, for curious minds and children and, you know, mischief. Right? So that is what we have on the 20s, the 50s, and the 100s. And it's, it's smooth. So even if a person tries to replicate if those features on paper, you feel the difference. Even if they get a piece of hard plastic, you will still feel the difference. We have a new design on the 50s. On the $50 bill, I'm not going to ask you anything again because I realize you don't know. On the $50 bill, we have the Brimstone Hill and the Pitons St. Lucia. Brimstone Hill St. Kitts and the Pitons in St. Lucia. We remove the Pitons St. Lucia and put them on the hundreds and we include an image of Socket Dwight Venner, the former governor, on the fifties. Of course, you know we have a new governor, Timothy N.J. Antoine. The current banknote has K. Dwight Venner. So the signature of the new governor, Timothy N.J. Antoine, would be in, on, on the note. Humphrey explains that the concept designs of the notes and major features will be maintained. We try to use features that are related to the Eastern Caribbean, underwater wall and in the air and so on. So we still have the green for the fives and it still depicts the Trafalgar Falls in Dominica and Admiral House in Antigua and Barbuda. The blue for the tens with Admiralty Bay in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which you didn't know, right? And, and the waspite in Anguilla. All right, the twenties. Some of you would say purple, mauve, or red. Okay, still the same color with the government house in Montserrat and the nutmeg in Grenada. And the 50s, same color. This is where we actually made the change. So before we, on the existing paper 50s, we have the Brimstone Hill in St. Kitts and the, the Pitons in St. Lucia. We have removed the Pitons in St. Lucia and put them on the hundreds and now include an image of Sir K. Dwight Bernard, the former governor, on the fifties. And here we have Sir Arthur Lewis, which is still, which is on the paper hundred, okay? Because the paper hundred depicts Sir Arthur Lewis and the ECCD building. So what we did now is Sir Arthur Lewis still and the pitons in St. Lucia. And if you notice, the pitons in St. Lucia on the existing $50 bill, it looks slightly different, but you will still recognize it is uh, the other pitons. And this is what we're talking about in terms of the modernized images of the banknotes. And even more security features have been added. Humphrey pointed out that the EC banknotes is one of the very few banknotes in the world that has the most security features, making it difficult for anyone to counterfeit. Meanwhile, Shermelon Kirby, 
advisor of the Corporate Relations Department at the ECCB, said that a major sensitization campaign will be rolled out across the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union ahead of the transition from cotton paper to polymer EC banknotes. For the API, I am Shanna Daniel reporting. The following is a message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment. Oh, new snacks on the market. I show my children love this. Mm. Really? Yeah. New snacks? Very eye-catching. Look at the amount of sodium or salt in this. I would buy this for my child. Oh, really? And I bought this so I never know they pack with so much sodium. Two snacks that are less than 140 milligrams of sodium per serving. Let's all healthier life. A message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment. And finally on this evening's program, the control and prevention of diabetes hair has been given a boost thanks to the contribution of a team of medical practitioners from the McKay University in Taiwan. The team recently donated machines for hemoglobin analysis to the Ministry of Health. Sheridan Lewis has the story. A medical team from the McKay Memorial Hospital in Taiwan is presently in the country to commence a pilot project designed to aid the control and prevention of diabetes. The team on Friday 11th January donated a total of five hemoglobin A1C machines worth over EC $100,000 to the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment at the Ministry's conference room. Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment, the Honorable Luke Brown, in his address, thanked the team for the timely donation and revealed the extensive groundwork that was paved prior to the initiation of this project. He also outlined the importance of the HA1C machines. When I went to Taiwan earlier this year for the World Health Forum, I had the good fortune of being able to tow, tow the, the McKay Hospital. And uh, I met, I should also say, a contingent of Vincentians there. They are described as the seed instructors. Now, it is a multifaceted group, a group of doctors, nurses, dietitians, health promotion officers, and they were there for the purpose of training. They weren't an advanced party for me, by any chance. <laughs> you know, they, they were there being trained for precisely what we are here to launch right now. A workshop where they're going to put their training into practice and uh, put their skills or deploy their skills for the purpose of the project, this capacity building project for the prevention and control of diabetes. So you see how we have been able to take this project from paper where it once was to life. And there is always, in the course of any project, a gestation period. In that gestation period, training was taking place, and now there's going to be a different type of training. There's going to be a workshop in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and uh, a critical piece of equipment is here to underpin that workshop, the, the an analyzers of your, your the, essentially the glucose in your hemoglobin, and I'll say a little bit more about that as we go along. But I wanted us to, to recognize the quality of support that we have from the Republic of China and Taiwan for this project. They didn't decide to pick, you know, sometimes when West Indies go and play cricket, they might send a, a B team or a, a C team or some kind of team to, to play in different areas. But what Taiwan has done is basically given us the best of the best so that we could really make strides in healthcare in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. <laughs> you know, and they draw some blood and you have a, a glucose reading for that moment, a blood sugar level reading for that moment. And if you want to have another reading in another moment, you have to get choked again. <laughs> and then if you want it a week later to have another reading, you're getting choked again. So hopefully this is going to take some of the pain out of healthcare, <laughs> you know, because you'd be able to get a sense of what has been happening over an extended period of time, and you would recognize that this is critical for, for monitoring, and it is going to certainly strengthen 
our, our ability for integrated diabetes care in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and that is significant. So these machines or analyzers, they're going to be deployed to some pilot health centers, and I'm sure that after the pilot phase is concluded, we would have them established at important nodes of health services delivery as we continue to fight this debilitating ailment. We in St. Vincent and the Grenadines know very well that we're going to, we have a, we have a big problem with diabetes. We, we've just seen or we've had recently the census report. I think it was eventually released in 2012, the most recent report, which shows that we have about 7,000 people living with diabetes, self-reporting living with diabetes. That's about 7% of our population. And of course, there are other problems too because th this is complicated when a person who has diabetes also has hypertension. And I want us to realize that, and, and the persons who have hypertension, they're, they're about 11,000 or so of them, but I'm not going to even get into the details there because we're talking about diabetes today. We're making an important step forward with respect to our ability to care for patients with diabetes. But this doesn't mean that we're going to take our eye off of the fact that prevention is better than cure. And this is why I'm happy that we have a nutritionist here. So it's not all about this machine and being able to make it work. It's about getting our diets right. It's about eating clean in 2019. Each analyzer we have been advised costs US $10,000. They're about in that vicinity. And there are five of them. So they cost to in total US $50,000. Now that's over $100,000 and that's something to clap for. Yes. We, we are $100,000 plus better able to take care of what is required in our health services in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And for that again, we remain indebted to our friends from Taiwan. Director of International Medical Service Center at the McKay Memorial Hospital, Dr. Yong Wei Su, in his remarks, noted that the hemoglobin A1C machine is an essential tool for diabetic care and management. So this bilateral relationship straightened our uh, the formal uh, diplomatic relation between Taiwan and uh, St. Vincent and Grandin. I remember last year when uh, Minister Brown visited our hospital, he pointed out one very important issue is the people-to-people -people relationship is the foundation of the two countries' relationship. So I'm so happy to have this opportunity to bring my team again to visit St. Vincent and Grandin. So, you know, uh, I, I do believe through this people-to-people -people relationship, our uh, bilateral relationship can persist and become more and more strengthened. St. Vincent and Grenadine, also Taiwan, as other countries, we all face many challenges. We face challenges such as climate change. Also, we face the higher and higher prevalence of NCD. This is also very important issue for all countries. We spend many efforts, resources, in the prevention of NCD. Diabetes is one of the major issues of NCD. Today, the HbA1c machine is a vital uh, machine for the prevention and also management of the diabetic care. It has a milestone, actually it's developed in 1970s. Since then, the HbA1 machine is uh, uh, like a milestone to further management of the diabetes care. So today, I'm so honored to have this opportunity to, you know, to donate this HbA1c machine. This machine will serve as a token for both our uh, countries as a relationship and love and also contribution.
The team, in conjunction with the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment, commenced a workshop showcasing the machines and other aspects of diabetic management on Monday and ends on Thursday at the Methodist Church Hall. Reporting for the API, I am Sheridan Lewis. The public is asked to take note of the following announcement. The Government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, GOSVG, has received funding from the World Bank towards the Caribbean Regional Communications Infrastructure Program, CASIP. The project is being implemented by the Economic Planning and Sustainable Development Division, EPSSD, in the Ministry of Finance, Economic Planning, Sustainable Development and Information Technology. The overall objective of the project is to increase access to regional broadband networks and advance the development of an ICT-enabled services industry in the Caribbean region. The government is therefore inviting individual consultants to express interest in the following positions contract manager, IT engineer, network administrator and technician. The deadline for submitting expressions of interest is Wednesday 23rd January 2019. Further information can be obtained at the Economic Planning and Sustainable Development Division, Ministry of Finance, Economic Planning, Sustainable Development and Information Technology, First Floor Administrative Centre, Bay Street, Kingstown. You can contact them at telephone number 784-457-2182 or visit our Facebook page at API SVG. And with that, we come to the end of this evening's presentation. Do join us again on Thursday when we'll have another informative package for you. I'm Nadia Slater. I'll see you then.